work is I'll just do some demonstrations of Scammy. I'll show you what the environment looks like so that if you yourself wanted to annotate a PDF document using Kami, I'll show you all the different um, tools and functions that it has. And then I'll actually show you the Google Classroom integration piece, which is pretty cool. So you can actually create a Kami assignment directly from Google Classroom. So I'll show you how to do that. And then I'll also show you what that looks like from a student's perspective and how a student will actually complete your Kami assignment that you assigned, and then they can actually just re like submit it to you all within the Kami environment. It's pretty cool. Um, all right, so like I said, if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and let me know, um, but I'm gonna go, go ahead and get started and just show you what it looks like and uh, kind of how to get signed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and present my screen. Okay. So you should see my camiapp.com screen here. So if you haven't yet signed up for a Cami account, this will be your first stop. So you'll go to camiapp.com and then you'll click create an account and you'll just create an account with Google. Super simple. Um, this exact step also unfortunately must be taken by the students as well. So students will have to actually go to camiapp.com click create an account, and then use their Google account to sign up. We can't actually create those accounts for them. Um, and so once you do that, you'll be prompted to say, I'm at a K-12 district. Um, the other choices are university, private school maybe. So you'll obviously choose K-12. to And then you will choose, I'm a teacher. Students will choose, I'm a student. And then once you accept permissions, you're good to go. And that's the only time that you'll have to do that. Now, the really good news is that over the weekend, we figured out how to actually push the Cami extension to all students and staff. So you all, even if you've not gone to the Chrome Web Store yourself to install the extension, you should now see a little purple K in your browser. That's what it looks like. And all students should also now see this in their Chromebooks. So if you have a student saying, I don't see this little purple K, you can tell them, sign out of your Chromebook, sign in again, and then you'll see the little purple K. Can everybody see my screen? Cynthia's saying she doesn't see it. You guys see it? Okay. Yes. Um, Cynthia, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna keep on going, but let me know if you still don't see it. Um, okay, so students do not have to install the extension. They'll, they should be able to see it up here. And so basically these two things together, this Cami account that you're creating plus the extension is what lets you use Cami and lets you integrate it also with Google Classroom. All right, so once you do that, and I've already done that, so I'm just gonna click sign in. So this is if you yourself want to go in and annotate a PDF that you currently have. You might not ever want to do this. You might only want to go into your Google Classroom and assign your students like a blank, clean PDF. But I'm going to show you what it looks like if you yourself want to go in, choose a PDF that you have, and annotate it. Um, and then you, I'll show you what that looks like, OK? So first of all, you can open it from your Google Drive. It'll just prompt you to choose something from there. Or you can open it if you have a PDF saved onto your computer. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open this right here, okay? Um, also during the course of this, I'll stop a few times and we'll talk a little bit about what ideas you might have for how you might use Cami with your students, or if you already have used Cami with your students, um, we can talk about that. But really, we started getting a lot of requests from elementary school teachers, from you guys, asking about Cami specifically. So that's why we ended up looking into it and deciding that we're gonna go ahead and get um, push this out. And then also, you'll see this little yellow thing that says the trial ends in 17 days. That's technically true. Um, Cami has given us uh, a free subscription to their upgraded features through the end of this month, but hopefully they will continue and extend it through the rest of the school year. I think they probably will, but hopefully they'll do that. Um, and so you can use um, any kind of PDF that you have, you can annotate. 
And so this is what this, the Kami environment looks like. So over here on the left, I've got my toolbar. Now, if I want my toolbar on the right, I can just click move to the right and it'll go to the other side of my screen if I care about that. Um, the first time you log in, you might see this where it doesn't actually say what each of the tools are. You just have to click the little expansion arrows and it'll pop out, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna kind of run down the line and show you what these tools do. So first of all, the dictionary. It's, it's just got a dictionary feature, so you just select a word and the dictionary definition will pop up. And just to note, students see this exact same environment. So everything I'm showing you, students will see the exact same thing. Um, they also have text-to-speech. So if you have text-to-speech selected, you can select a text. And then you can actually change the speed. You can change the voice. A couple of people have commented to me that they felt like the text-to-speech in Kami is a little bit less robotic sounding than the text-to-speech in Google Read Write. So just an FYI. Um, and then the markup feature. So here are some of the reasons why we especially are wanting to use Kami, right? So that we can actually mark it up. So the first markup option is the highlighter. You can choose a different color, and then you just select your text, let go, and you've got a highlight. You can also highlight an entire box. So here you can see I've got like a little cross, and I just click and hold, and then just drag, and now I can highlight an entire box. I can do a strike through, so just choose the strike through, let go, and then of course I can also do an underline. Okay. And then the commenting features. So these are some of the features that when I did this for the middle school, they were especially excited about these features. So I'll show you these. So first of all, the text comments, these are pretty much like what we see in Google Docs. So I have text comments selected. I can just click anywhere in my document and it, it leaves like a little breadcrumb. And so I can just type in a text comment and, this, and uh, the student will see the text comment. Okay, and then I can actually leave a voice, I can actually leave a text comment using my voice. So if I don't wanna actually type, I can just click the microphone, look at this one again, and then it'll leave a text comment, but I used my voice to actually record it. Um, and then here you can actually leave a voice comment. So here I can click and as soon as I click, the audio starts recording. So I need to be ready with what I'm gonna say. And then I finish. And now the student actually will be able to click play and listen to my actual voice. And then finally, I can leave a video comment. So same thing with video. You have to be kind of camera ready because as soon as you click, it's gonna start recording your video. So I'll click. And uh, make sure you look at this one again. You got the time wrong um, on this problem. And so now the student actually can see me um, leaving a little video comment. There is a screen capture, but I think you need a separate um, extension for screen capture. Plus we have Screencastify, so I didn't even really look at the screen capture option for this, um, but that's there as well if you wanted to play with it. But again, I think you might have to add like an additional extension. All right, so these are the different ways you can comment. And then you can insert a text box. So this is just like um, like a Google Docs feature so or a Google Drawing feature. You just click anywhere in your doc and you'll get a text box. And you can just type in the text box. And up at the top, you can see I've got options just like any other word processing program. I can change the font, the size, bold it, all that stuff for my text box, okay? Um, I can also change colors. So the equation feature is kind of cool. You can change the size, you can change the color, and then if you click on the, the pie symbol, you'll actually be able to insert mathematical symbols 
onto a PDF. So you would just click somewhere, whoops, somewhere in there, click your symbols, and you can add mathematical symbols into your PDF. The drawing feature is just like many other tools that we have. You can use your fingertip or you can use the cursor and you can just draw in there. So some students, when they mark up a PDF worksheet, they might prefer to draw and draw, like write their answers, or some might prefer the text, the text box. So maybe you determine that for them. Maybe they can choose themselves which um, how they prefer to annotate. But again, you can do different stroke thicknesses and different colors. You can also insert shapes. So you can do a square. You could do an ellipsis. Um, the triangle is kind of cool because it actually tells you the angles of your triangle. And then same with the line. It tells you the angle of the line that you're drawing. And you can change colors for that as well. And then the eraser, anything that you want to erase, you basically, once you have the eraser selected, you just click on it and it goes away, okay? And then you can also insert an image into your PDF. So if it's an image that you have in your Google Drive, an image you have saved on your computer, or I think you can actually do a Google search um, and insert images that way as well. So basically any way you can think of wanting to annotate a PDF, you can do it with Kami. Finally, you can even do a signature. So if you find yourself needing to add a signature to a PDF, you can actually draw your signature and then upload it to the PDF. So these are basically all of the creative tools and the ways that you can annotate um, a PDF. And again, students see this exact same, all these exact same options. So let's take a minute and if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Also, if you have any ideas for how you might use this with students. And I'll take a look at the question or the comments here in the chat as well. So feel free to type any comments or questions into the chat or just um, unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask that way too. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Jen. Hi. Um, this looks really promising. And so I just wanted to get the big picture idea. So mm -hmm. after I, so as an educator, after I manipulate the PDF and make it as I want, like you're showing, then, and maybe you're just going to get to this next, um, in order for the students to see all the features that, I, that are embedded within this PDF, do they also have to have the um, the app? Um, what do I say? The yeah, do, do, yeah, yeah. Do they do they need the app themselves? Yes. Yeah. So luckily, we have been able to push out the extension to all students. Originally, right. we thought students were going to have to go to the web store, but no. So now they've got the extension. They will have to still go to camiapp.com and sign up for an account with Google. So just do that. That's what I meant. Okay. So yeah, they they do need to do that. So, um, but like I mentioned too, it's very possible that you guys will never like randomly create a, a, an annotated PDF to share with students. Like maybe you will just only be sharing the clean copies, and the students will do the annotating. Um, okay. But maybe you will actually mark up with something that you want to share with them. And so I'll show you next how if you do want to, let's say, take this exact um, file that I just annotated and I want to save it so that I mm -hmm. could share it with students, um, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other comments or ideas about how, like what you might do with this? Okay. Hello. Hi. My name is Julia. Oh, I'm sorry. I. I am with my web camera. Can I have a question for yes. you regarding, uh, I mean, I did an, a PDF document. Can I use Kami if I have big PDF book 
like book and PDF, and I need only two pictures, two pages from this book. Can I cut and make a new PDF document from this book using Kami resource? Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that actually, because yes, so I I'm mean, right, yeah. I'm, right now I'm going back to camiapp.com. This was kind of where we started from. So uh -huh. one of the options is, and I haven't really played with this too much, but if you click split and merge, right, do you see that? Where it no. says split and merge? Do you guys see it? I don't screen? see your screen. You don't, Yulia? Mm -mm. um i see you you see me okay yes but I, I, you know what? I saw the screen before you know okay. what Ilya? i don't know if um maybe you have her um i figured it out i had you pinned so maybe if you have alicia pinned maybe that's why you can't see her screen yeah i can see you and i can see the screen i see the people on the right and your screen alicia okay yeah uh, what so maybe should, um what should i push because i saw the screen before and I saw it you perfectly. Okay. I'm not sure because I'm still sharing it. Um, but I'm just going to explain it right now. And then you, I can kind of stay with you later if you want to. And we can try to take a look at it again. But right now there's a split and merge. So if you click split and merge, this is where you can add like a big PDF file that's multiple pages. You can split them. Or if you have multiple PDFs that you want to merge together into one, this is where you would do that. So yes, that is a feature. And Julia, I'll help you um, later figure that out. But I did want to make sure that you guys saw this too. So that's an option because I've had a couple of questions about that too. Okay. Um, so I will go on here. And now let's say I'm finished with marking up my document. So now what do I do with it? Um, the thing that I most often do is just download. So really, I haven't used these other options. Like I could print it if I wanted to. I could save it. But if you click download, here's where you can export it. So you can export it to your computer or to Google Drive. And you can choose to either get rid of all your annotations and just save the original clean copy. Or I think what I would most often do is choose to have the copy with the annotations, right? So this will save a, a copy that looks exactly like my all marked up worksheet. Um, and then it'll tell you what the file name is. And you can even change that file name right here. It'll tell you how many pages it is. You can also do an annotations only export, which I've never tried. So I think that's just if you made comments or you just want the comments and the annotations, but not like the original document. Um, so these, this would probably be the thing that you would use the most if you wanted to get a file that you were then going to share with students. Like maybe you wanted to sh show them an example, right, of what a completed product might look like. Um, so this might be a way that you would do that. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to now go to my Google Classroom and show you how to create a Cami assignment within Google Classroom. So this is a test class that I have. It's called Rainbow Class. And so I'll go to classwork and then I'll click create. Okay. So now since I have the extension up in my browser and I have a Cami account, so I have those two things, I'll now see an option to create a Cami. <laughs> Cute. Uh, I love when kids, um, people's kids join. That's so fun. Um, I'll now create a Cami assignment. So I'll click there. And one thing to note and you might have to, you have to allow, whoop, uh, hang on a second. Let me get back to my correct account here. Okay. Um, so one thing to note is you can only create a Cami assignment and by attaching PDF. So if you try to create an assignment and you have like a Google Drive file attached, it will not work. You'll get an error message. So that happened to somebody else. They were like, why am I getting an error message when I create a Cami assignment? And it was because they were attaching a Google Drive file, like a, a, a slideshow. So that will not work. Um, you can save 
give a slideshow as a PDF, right? Like you can download it as a PDF, and then that will allow you to um, annotate it. Sorry, I've got all these um, test accounts. Bear with me for one sec. Okay, great. Um, you know what, I, this is kind of giving me some issues, but basically it'll just pop up, um, just as if you were creating a normal assignment, it'll let you give it a name. It'll let you give a description, like read and annotate or whatever. Um, it will let you give uh, points when it's due. So it'll give you all of your normal options. And also just like normal, it'll give you the option to attach a file either by um, Google Drive or via like attaching from your computer. So you can attach your file in either way. It just has to be a PDF. So again, like a slideshow won't work, a doc won't work, but you can save those as PDF, but it has to be a PDF. So then you'll just click assign, okay? So Mine, I'm getting all these conflicts, but basically click Cami assignment, give it a name, description, points, due date, whatever, attach your PDF and click assign, and then you're good to go. So now I am going to switch over to my student view here, and we'll take a look at what that looks like. Okay. So now you should see rainbow class, but with a little blue E in the top right corner. Do you guys see that? Yep, okay, so this is my elementary school test student who is a student in the rainbow class. Um, so this, this is an assignment, let's see, let's do, let's do this one. Um, I'm gonna do, uh, show you guys an assignment that I posted a few days ago. And so you can see these most recent assignments, they all say via Cami. That's how you know that it's a Cami assignment. So if you assign a Cami assignment, it'll show up for students as assignment via Cami. And then these are my different titles. So let's just do Cami Text Slam. And again, I'm a student. I see it says to read and annotate. I can see here's my PDF. So as a student, I click on that. And now again, because I'm a student and I've got my little K Cami extension, I have this option to open with Cami. So if you have a student that says, I don't have the open with Cami option, you could have them log out, log back in, and they should see the little K in the browser. And then that will make it so that they can click open with Cami. Okay, so you'll notice this is, um, okay. So this is, sorry, giving me some more technical issues. Um, so basically behind my little notification, you can see the exact same workshop, worksheet that's blank and the exact same options that we had as teachers. So they'll be able to mark it up, they'll be able to comment, they'll be able to do everything that we could do, insert text boxes and all of that. Um, so one thing, um, that I don't, hopefully you can see this where my mouse is right now. Um, it says turn in. Do you guys see that? So it's up at the top. It's kind of hard to see because of this little notification. But so again, I'm in the student view. I click turn in. And so as a student, when I'm all finished annotating, I click turn in and it'll say, are you sure? And then I'll say yes. 
and then students will actually turn in their assignment just within Kami. They don't have to go back to Google Classroom at all. Okay. So then I'm going to flip back here one more time. Okay. And so now I'm back in my in my uh, now I'm the teacher again. And I can go into my grades and I can see I'll just click on one assignment. Um this students, let's see. Find one that was turned in. Okay, this one was turned in, so I just click on it. And I can see that this student annotated it. Now, the first time that you guys actually uh, open it, you'll just see this screen where you can't actually mark it up. Like you're not in the Cami environment. All you can do is give it a grade and make a comment. But if you check this box and if you check it once, it'll stay checked forever until you uncheck it. It'll actually let you annotate it and grade it using the Cami tools, which is pretty cool. So again, I'm a teacher. This is, I'm looking at my students' work. So I could, make comments, I can make voice comments, I could make video comments, type, you know, text comments, I could add text, mark it up. So I, I can actually add in like my written comments onto their submitted Cami assignment. And then I could give it a grade, add comments if I wanted. And then right here where it says return, I just click that button. And then I can actually return this assignment all marked up with the grade to the student. So that's kind of the flow of how Cami integrates with Google Classroom. So hopefully even with the technical uh, difficulties, you guys were able to sort of get the idea and see how from a teacher's and a student's perspective, the Google Classroom works. So I'm gonna open it up again. If anybody has any questions or comments about how they might use it or any questions that you might have, Let me know. One thing that I noticed is that students don't necessarily have to push turn in um, for, for their Cami work to be pushed back to you. Um, so even if they didn't submit turn in, you might still have to go check your Google Classroom to see if they did the work. Um, and you'll still be able to see like what they did or did not do. Even so if they didn't push turn in. Mm -hmm. OK. And I was wondering if this uh, feature, the feature of text to speech, does that also work in Spanish? Let's see. Mm. Well, it's, it does have Google Espanol. So I guess if, if it was, if the text was in Spanish, Yeah, it just kind of gives it an accent, I think, but doesn't translate it. So if, if your text was in Spanish, you could, yes, um, change the voice to be basically Spanish, French, or British, or American, English. But you would have to select that as you're doing now. You'd have to yeah. go in that toolbar and select Google or Spanish or... Yeah, probably once you change it for that user, it would just always probably default to that. Any other questions or comments? I see Kate says um, her team and she assigned a page from learning A to Z. Uh, students could type their answer using the text box, draw their response using the drawing tools, or verbally respond using the comment feature. Cool. Yeah, so 17 day trial, Jen. So you'll notice it says the trial ends in 17 days. And when we originally were awarded the um, upgraded subscription, it 
did say, you know, this is good in, until end of August or end of April, but that they would reevaluate um, just based on how things are, are going with schools. So I'm hoping that they'll just continue it through the end of the school year, which is what most kind of ed tech companies seem to be doing. So don't be alarmed by that. Um, hopefully that'll be extended. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, this, like I said, this is being recorded, so it'll be out on our YouTube channel. And I wanted to show you guys also the YouTube channel and the Cami playlist. There are several short little videos about kind of some of the things I just demonstrated. So here's uh, the Cami playlist. So you can see all the videos on in the playlist off to the side. There is one that I made that's specifically for students. It's called For Students, How to Use Cami. Um, the only thing I did mention that they have to get the extension, but obviously they don't need to. But really it's just going through all of these different tools and how you can use them if you're a student. Also how you can use it if you're a student um, to do work that was assigned by their teacher from Google Classroom. So I demonstrate as a student how you get that, how you open with Cami and then submit your work. Um, but then there's all these other um, videos as well. And uh, for the YouTube channel, you can subscribe. I think we have like 45 subscribers, which is very exciting. Um, but we'll be doing um, a few more text slams, thinking like one or two of these text slams over the next few weeks. Um, on Thursday, we'll do two more at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And so depending on how things are looking with Zoom, maybe we'll do a Zoom one because um, that's kind of on the brink of being rolled out. But if it's not quite ready, then we'll do Seesaw. So Seesaw Premium for schools and we'll kind of look at some of those features and how you can use that. So um, also I take we take requests. So if there's any videos you would like to have made or if there's any text land topics you would like to have something like this um, to to learn about and uh, talk about a tech tool, just let me know also. So that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. And feel free to send me a hangout anytime or an email anytime, and I'm just here to support you um, at all times. So thank you. Thank you Have so much. Thank you. Thank thank you. Everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.